The measure of a scientist is not determined by the size of his or her lab, but by the size of his or her ideas. Uh, we have been watching uh, Mr. Bruce Butler. Uh, he, he did a presentation today. It was very inspirational. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself personally, my history. I'm going to talk to you scientifically as well. I'll discuss our work to identify the sensors of infection when it occurs in mammals. And uh, I'll tell you also about genetics and how genetics was used to crack that problem, how it's changed as well, and how much faster it is now, how we do things nowadays. To see a major name in science coming here to speak to us, and students like me, it's was some completely unusual. Here it was 1991 and we didn't understand how the innate immune system would perceive infection at all. And LPS was sort of the best entry point to that issue. Here was a molecule that was chemically defined and it would activate the innate immune system and we didn't know what its receptor was. I always love to see the human side of uh, science, which is completely different from what you read on the textbooks. One evening I was in my study looking over the BLAST results and I saw a very strong match between a database of RNA sequences and a putative gene in our contig. This was called the toll-like receptor 4 gene. And as I looked at it, I started to hyperventilate and I got tachycardic and I called Alexander Polterak, the lead postdoc on the project, and tried to explain why this was so exciting. And he understood and he started to hyperventilate too. And soon we uh, could barely talk with each other. He took almost 40 years to come to this level and maybe if we also follow this footstep and do some uh, real research work, probably perhaps in future we may also get some breakthroughs in research work. We are working with mouse genetics, things that take a long time to get results and we can't give up. I think this is the, really the message that he passed me today. I think I'm kind of obsessive and I hate to give up. In fact, I was told by many people you should not do this, this is too dangerous. You really need to diversify your portfolio. Uh, if you have nothing to show to the Hughes Institute, next time you're reviewed, you're not going to be funded. And in fact, that did happen. They cut me off. But I still didn't want to give up. I had worked on it too long, and I saw that it was possible to solve, and I was convinced it was an important problem. He has a very uh, peculiar way to understand how science works. So this is really, was really enriching for my uh, career, my personal knowledge as well. I learned a lot about the techniques that uh, his lab uses now. In the old days, it took us five years to track down that one first gene. Now it takes about one hour with present methods. I have to say the postdocs in my lab are very spoiled. What he's doing now, I had no idea that it existed. And he's actually getting result, uh, one or two results in a day for projects that uh, would take a research in a lab such as the one I have three, four or five years. As of October 23rd, which is about five days ago, I think, we had made 73,298 mutations that change coding sense in a large collection of mice. These fell into 17,843 genes, or in other words, we had altered 71% of all the genes in the mouse genome while keeping those mice under surveillance. We know that the mutations resided within a total of 32,868 G3 mice. So all this is very precise and down to the individual mouse. I think the, the approach that uh, these more established people take, which is to uh, try and think more broadly about science and not about uh, one's career specifically, but try to develop the field as a whole, I think that's, that's, that's the best approach and that's the approach I try to take in my career as well. When dealing with science, we have a huge responsibility that when we say we prove something, we have to be absolutely sure and the hint he gave for us to be a, a good scientist. There is a strong human tendency to want to be right rather than wrong. <laughs> and uh, when you make a hypothesis, of course, you're supposed to subject it to very rigorous tests and to try ardently to demonstrate that it's incorrect. But people like to be right and they like to think their ideas were correct. 
And uh, this is where a lot of scientific error comes from. Strictly speaking, one never proves a hypothesis. One fails to reject a hypothesis. But it's interesting to see that in science, you always have something in common in different communities. So we discussed funding issues, metrics, impact factors. I think, it, I think this is relevant for any scientist. You should not work just for flash or for some kind of temporary gain or to get into nature science or cell. Uh, that isn't really the point. If you do good, solid work consistently, you'll be recognized. People who work in that field will see this is a person who really is serious and has done a lot to expand our understanding. If you love what you do, you're going to get a good result out of it, I think. is that. That's what I learned today. Okay, you may gain some prizes, some Nobel Prize, but we do because we like to do it. And I never thought of giving up the career, never. I really am happy as a scientist and I couldn't imagine doing much else. I, I woke up today thinking, wow, today I'm going to meet a Nobel laureate. Being here today just motivates me to keep going on in my research. Mm -hmm.